Good morning across Australia and welcome to a class about starting your own podcast. It's uh, been such big news over the last couple of years of taking on podcasts, particularly during the pandemic, where podcast listening spiked really high above it, but it hasn't actually dissipated. Podcasting is continuing to grow. In fact, in 2022, it grew another 54% above what it was during the pandemic. So there's clearly an audience for it. What's the opportunity in there and why should you do it? That's what we're going to look at today. I'm Dante St. James from Business Station, and we're going to be exploring the world of podcasting. First of all, why you should do it. Secondly, how you can do it. And then thirdly, you know, a look at some of the systems that do that a, a bit of that work for you. I'll share my screen and get underway. Please bear in mind, we do have Q&A and chat open for the live people on Zoom right now. If you're watching this on YouTube afterwards, just pop your questions down below in the comments and we'll come back to you and, and helpfully answer those questions for you as well. Without further ado, let's get that screen shared and get underway. First of all, today, what we're going to look at is why you should start a podcast. We're going to look at some of the, the ins and outs of, of, of starting a podcast, how to actually make it happen, looking at the distribution of your podcast, how you make it go out to other places. And I've got a little bit of a bonus thing on the end there too, of um, when you where to go when you're looking for guests for your podcast, particularly if you're keen on the idea of doing interviews and, and talking to other experts in your field. This is brought to you by Business Station and the Digital Solutions Program supported by the Australian Government. Thank you very much for that. Make sure you are registered at digitalsolutions.businessstation.com.au to make sure you get the full value out of the program. After all, it's just 44 bucks for three hours of one-to-one -one advisory and as many webinars and these classes as you want to participate in. This will be recorded and put on YouTube later on, as I mentioned before, to people listening on YouTube. They'll be appearing in both the Business Station um, channel so uh youtube.com forward slash at business station and then in my own one which is youtube.com forward slash at dante st james uh all those sort of things will be easy to find just search me online you'll find me or search business station bit about me if you haven't come across me before i like to collect lots of badges i'm a uh, certified lead trainer with meta australia new zealand which is uh, the, the facebook company um also part of business station with the digital solutions and workforce australia self-employment services programs based out of darwin in the northern territory Right now, I'm house sitting on the Gold Coast, so I'm a little bit on holiday mode. That said, though, I'm certainly not stopping when it comes to preparing these classes and taking on those one-to-one one-to-one um, -one consultations. I'm also part of the Digital Springboard Program, which is by Google, and the Be Connected um, Network Partnership that I have with helping older Australians to better understand how to participate in the digital economy. So my own journey with podcasting, uh, this is the reason why I'm on here, is that, that I'm actually um, a podcaster myself. And it's not just I'm talking theory, I'm talking what I actually do myself and a bit of what you may want to do. I started my podcast, Clickstarter, back in 2018. Um, that was two years after I started my business, Clickstarter. Um, I took on the uh, name of the, the business as the podcast name because it kind of makes sense. It's about getting those clicks started, I suppose. I'm now, at, uh, as of this week, up to 222 episodes um, with over oh, just over now 500,000 uh, downloads over that period so half a million downloads with about 5,000 listens per week give or take depending on you know how popular that particular episode is it certainly didn't start from that position though I started from absolute zero no listeners no nothing and this has grown over time now my podcast is nothing spectacular it is absolutely even though those results look really cool I've done nothing special. I've done no, like practically no effort in putting this thing together. It's basically just my blog read out loud. So I've got a blog that I produce a weekly um, uh, article in, and then I just turn that into a, a reproduced version on podcasts. And for some reason, because it's been quite consistent over those few years, um, it's grown quite an audience about it. So I'm, I think I probably should take it a bit more seriously than what I do. That said, um, someone else did, which is uh, Feedspot, which Feedspot is like a, a ranking um, site for podcasts. And they have ranked me as the number one uh, Australian digital marketing podcast. So I thought that was really cool. And it's um, saying that basically I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm one to follow in 2023. So that's a really good, um, I, I was really happy happy with that result. Enough about me. 
what we want to see is what the results were. So I'm not just doing this just for you know a bit of glory and a little bit of narcissism. I'm doing it because it drives 500 plus clicks to my website every single week. And those people go on to either read about my products and services, or they drop in and read more of my blogs, or they join my newsletter. In fact, 20 or more people subscribe to my newsletter weekly as a direct result of this podcast. I've got two to or more bookings for consultations each week. This week, I picked up three, so it was a lot more. Um, 10 plus general inquiries weekly. That goes up and down depending on the week. A little bit quieter this week. Definitely probably quiet next week. But once we come back into January, that's when things really start to pick up. And I'm establishing, I'm estimating there's about $37,000 of value is going to my business because of this. Now, apologies for the dogs barking in the background. It's just at this time when someone decides to come to the door. <laughs> so unfortunately, I have to ignore that because I'm in the middle of a webinar. So about $37,000 of value in 2022, which I think is um, certainly added a lot to my business. And it, it's actually been the, the second largest of the generators of new business for me after my newsletter and just ahead of the work I'm doing on LinkedIn. So I take it very, very seriously. It's a very big part of my life. The future of my podcast is it's going to go daily in 2023. So from, uh, I believe it's the third, uh, Tuesday, the third of, 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 of January, um, I'm going to start having daily episodes going in there. They're going to be shorter more sharp under five minutes just so you can get that daily little fix of um something to do with you know social media digital marketing and uh personal branding and it's going to be far more focused in its topics and i'm going to do one longer episode every week which is going to be a weekly deep dive into a particular topic so yeah i'm taking it definitely seriously because this thing's now making me money so i've got to look at it in a bit more seriousness now why should you start a podcast? I've got 17 reasons I'm going to shoot through. Nine out of 10 Aussies are aware of podcasting. So that's pretty good. That, that doesn't mean that, you know, it's just the same way that, you know, everyone's aware of radio and television. Well, almost everyone now is aware that podcasting is a thing. They understand what it is, even though they might necessarily listen to it. But 40% of Australians in 2022 listen regularly to podcasts. It's around about half of all Australians listen to them on a semi-regular basis, but every single week, pretty much someone listens to podcasts. That's 40% of Australians. So 40% of 25 million, you do the maths and you can figure out that's a lot of people. In addition, it reaches a whole new audience who prefer to listen rather than read. Not everyone sits there wanting to read great big globs of text. Uh, they don't necessarily have the time for. The beautiful thing is that the podcasting happens in the background. During my day of work, I'm constantly listening to podcasting because that's how I new, learn new things and pick up new tips and tricks on how to do things. It, 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 it's something which is far more passive than having to sit there and have a dedicated read. If I hear something on a podcast that gets my attention, I can quickly jot it down and I've got that new information to move forward with. Whereas, you know, I can't really do that when I'm having to read something. I'm having dedicated time then having to read it. 80% of those who listen regularly listen right to the end of each podcast episode. That's really important because that's not the case with YouTube videos. YouTube videos, uh, the drop-off happens after, after about a minute. It really, really drops off um, or people just jump straight to the point which um, involves them. But because of the personality involved with podcasting, people will listen right to the end. And there's often stuff at the end that's incentivized for people to listen to. It might be like a, um, a special link to a special gift or something which is going to keep them thinking a bit more about that. And then number five, it increased credibility when you have a podcast over just having social posts alone. Social media is a very effective way of getting attention. It's a great way of letting people know you're there a great way of letting people know that, um, that you have some expertise, but to really get some trust in that expertise, you have to lead people off social media into platforms where they can see more of your expertise. Long format content like blogs or you know, like a book or an ebook or, or a newsletter or a podcast. A podcast is a really good way of doing that. So it does give you a lot more credibility over just having social posts. It's also a more intimate connection than blogs and social media. Um, there's something about radio, for instance. Um, I come from a background of radio. I was in radio for, gosh, 13 and a half years, for, for probably about 15 years, actually. Um, but actually on air for about eight of those years. And there's something that you, you develop a rapport with people who you hear the voices of quite frequently. You, you feel like there's a bit of a relationship there. You understand 
them, sometimes you feel like they understand you as well. That's not just my bias coming from the fact that I used to be a radio guy. This is based upon the feedback I get from people who email me every week, thanking me for a piece of information or thanking me for you know being part of their week. And whilst that sounds really bizarre and sounds really self-congratulatory, it's actually what happens when you start a podcast. You get fans. People start to follow you. It's a weird thing that happens. You think of having fans as being weird? Start a podcast and you'll get them. Number seven, build uh, more effective at building a personal brand than social media alone. Social media, as I said, really good at building the attention, but something like a podcast or even a video channel is far more effective at driving that attention much further than just simply, hey, I know that person. It drives it down that funnel of knowing them, liking them, and trusting them. That's ultimately what you want to do for customers is to get them to trust you enough to work with you or buy from you. Number eight, doesn't require a big investment or any kind of fancy equipment. Now I've got my Shure microphone. Here's a $400 microphone. I didn't buy that until what, three years into my podcast. I was just using a really cheap $75 microphone that came like it was a little portable thing. It looks like a little grenade actually. And then you whack it out, unfold it and off it goes. That was the limit I went to. 75 bucks is what it cost me for three of those years. I bought this expensive one because I'm doing lots of these classes and I do a lot of professional voiceovers and I need to be able to do them from wherever I am, including house sitting on the Gold Coast. So in order to get that higher quality, yes, I did spend a bit more. That said, you don't need fancy equipment. Laptop computer, nice microphone, or even just a lower end one for about 75 bucks. Even lower than that, you can get them for around about 25 to $29. I saw one on Kogan the other day for $16. That was a really good enough condenser mic ready to, to work for podcasting. So for as low as $16.99, I think it was, plus about you know 20 bucks postage probably. But it's, it's, it's a way of you getting in without having to have a massive um, amount of, of equipment. You can go to JB Hi-Fi or Harvey Norman. They've all got computer microphones. Even if you get one of those little ones that sort of the Madonna mics, I call them, they've got the headphone, the headpiece one, they will give you a decent enough quality. In fact, if you want to use just your mobile phone, you can use the wired headphones. Now, Bluetooth ones don't do as good a job, but the wired ones, like the um, original Apple um, earbuds, uh, they are excellent because what you can do is just pull the little microphone thing up towards your mouth so that you get a much more direct voice straight into it. And that works by plugging into your, um, into your computer as well. So you don't need expensive equipment at all. Number nine, it builds your confidence when it comes to public speaking. And everyone can use a bit more confidence with that because you get to sort of rehearse this a bit. You get to be very well practiced at it. By the time you get to 222 episodes, then you'll be in a position where you're just going, well, um, you, you don't need to worry too much about you know, confidence because you've done this so many times. So it's a really good gateway to that. Number 10. It's nowhere near as saturated as blogs. There are 574 million blogs in the world. Yes, you heard right. 574 million blogs. There's nowhere as near as many podcasts. In fact, there's only 2 million podcasts, even though the, the audience for the both of them isn't that far separated. It's certainly not, you know, um, 200 times the, the audience. It's certainly nowhere near that. It's more like you know, maybe about um, 20 to 30 times the audience of blogs is what there is to podcasts. But the actual amount of people doing those podcasts is very low in comparison to those who are doing blogs. Now, there's, there's a blog for every few people, but there's a podcast for every 174 people, roughly. It's also an excellent lead generator. I was telling you before how my podcast generates a lot of general inquiries and, and generates a lot of uh, new business and requests for quotes. That happens every single week. That started happening after about a year of doing the podcasting. It didn't happen straight away, but I was also very clunky and, and very, very, um, uh, I, I would say probably very inconsistent when I was first doing that. But now, of course, things are very different. I'm much more consistent. And so those leads are coming through much more consistently as well. It's also very easy to repurpose in either direction. What I mean by that is you can take pieces of your, of your podcast and split them up into little, um, little videos if you want to. If you want to just get little audio grabs of certain points from your podcast, you just pay, I'll show you how to do a little bit of that later on in one of my systems. But it also means that you can do the lazy thing like I do, which is basically I write a blog every week uh, and then I go and turn that into a podcast. I just read it out loud and just put a top and a tail on it. And I'll show you again how I do that. 
and it's very easy to repurpose that um, without having to go to lots of extra effort each week. Like I said, I grew all mine just basically the most lazy way I possibly could. Number 13, it's um, the specialist subjects. So that's probably what you're doing, what I'm doing. I'm talking about digital marketing. You could be talking about um, dog grooming. You could be talking about um, you know, uh, whole, wellness and, 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 and holistic um, health. You could be talking about exercise and nutrition or what Whatever the area is you work in, you can talk about any of these different things um, because specialist subjects are actually the number one topic in Australia when it comes to podcasts, both with men and women. Now, it's closely followed by things like news and lifestyle and contemporary life. There's interest in all kinds of stuff, including comedy. Comedy is actually the number one, um, the number one overall podcast type, largely driven by uh, comedians, uh, stand-up comedians who've started their own regular podcasts and also radio hosts who think they're comedians but they're not not really um number 14 the average of one hour and 45 minutes listening time every week for podcasts in Australia. So that's a lot of attention. One hour and 45 minutes a week. For me, it's something more like three hours. I listen to about 30 different podcasts every week. Some of them are very, very short, no more than two to three minutes. Some of them go for nearly two hours. So my listening every week is in multiple hours every week, simply because that's where I do a lot of my learning. I find it a lot easier and a lot more efficient than sitting there and having to read up on things. I can get the information I need and then follow up and read extra info on those topics a little bit later on. 15, we're listening in multiple places more than once. The number one place for people to listen to regular updates and podcasts is YouTube. That's not just our audio podcasts, it's also video podcasts or vodcasts, VOD casts, video podcasts. So YouTube's the number one place Australians listen to. So secondly, to, to Spotify and then Apple. And strangely enough, um, Spotify has come out of nowhere to really take this over. Apple used to be far and above the highest listening point for all podcasts just even two years ago. Now it's YouTube. Spotify is really popular now. They um, have bought a lot of the very famous podcasts like Joe Rogan Experience, um, the Gimlet Network, Work, which includes things like Reply All and several other kinds of um, longer format podcasts. Um, Apple is still around very heavily because, hey, they own the iPhone. Um, ABC is one of the biggest sources of listening to podcasts. ABC podcasts are very highly in, um, rated and very highly listened to. Uh, Google Podcasts is another po platform you can get on your phone to allow you to listen to podcasts. And Audible, which is um, Amazon's uh, audiobook channel, also happens to have podcasts on it. So I'm on Audible. I'm on all these except ABC, really. Um, I don't don't know how to get on ABC. I'll have to figure that out. Otherwise, it's probably just ABC shows, to be honest. Number 16, podcasts reach people where social and blogs can't reach them. So whilst, you know, about 85%, 84% of, um, of people will listen to podcasts in the home, it's around 56% will listen when driving um, and then walking. So driving, walking, public transport, work, exercise, they tend to be places where you don't have as much freedom to be able to consume things like blogs and social media especially driving, you can't, you, you can just leave, you listen to podcasts, but you can't go and, you know, participate in social media or read blogs. Um, and when you're working, you may not have as much time to read, but you can listen to things as you're going. And with exercising, well, it just goes in your headphones. So you're able to listen. So exercise, um, walking, driving, uh, very significant drivers of podcast listening when they're combined, they actually form you know, the vast majority of people who are listening to podcasts. Um, the reason why there's like overlap here is if some people listen in lots of those places, like me, I listen when exercising, I listen when working, I listen when walking, I listen when driving and I listen at home. So I'm in five of those categories, but it does get to people where you can't get to otherwise. A bit like radio, exactly the same thing as radio number 17 podcasts i've already done that one <laughs> there's only 16 of them someone wasn't taking notice with his attention to detail so why do you want to start an ex uh, a podcast this is a really important question to ask um, a bit like simon sinek where well, you got to start with your why i think the same comes to when you're starting a podcast you do are you doing it because you've got a fear of missing out fomo oh you've got some it's a trend that you feel like you need to hop on are you doing it because there's an opportunity that's presented itself? Or are you doing it because you've got very defined goals that you think that a podcast may help you achieve? The problem with doing it just because it's trending and because you've got a fear of missing out is you'll get very sick of it very quickly. And 60% of podcasts never get to episode four. They never get past the third episode because there's effort involved. There's learning curve involved, even though it's not much really, there's still some learning curve involved. And you're going to find that you need to motivate 
motivate yourself. If you're not really into this platform, if you're not really heavily into you know, wanting to do this, if you're not doing it for very defined goals that keep you going, you're going to need some separate motivating with it. And the other thing is that there's probably other things you prefer to do. There's like, you know, if you're a writer, just blog. If you're a video person, do videos. Um, audio is one of those things where it lends itself to people who are a little bit more extroverted when they've got that expressive personality. Um, but at the same time, it can be also more introverted people who are not quite ready to do video, but they do feel comfortable doing some audio. So that's not a great reason to do it. Maybe a better reason because there's an opportunity there. You'd like to get in early. You see a gap in the market for not many podcasts that talk about what you talk about. Um, you're willing to learn and you're willing to commit. And you also know that, that podcasts actually help you with your ranking on Google too. If you look for um, Clickstarter, for instance, online, it doesn't just bring up my uh, blog and my and my social media properties. It brings up episodes of my podcast as well as uh, things from my um from my uh, YouTube channel as well. So there's the more different pieces of media you've got, the better your results are going to be on Google. And it certainly drives a lot of my extra traffic. But probably the best way to approach a podcast is like anything in business, to find some goals. Set yourself, you know, in my case, I've got some revenue goals for next year. I've estimated I've reached like a certain amount of $37,000 of my revenue came from directly from the promotions through podcasting. So what I want to do now is ensure that I get that a little higher. Um, so I might have awareness goals. I, I, was, I might have a certain amount of people I need to be aware of what I do so that they'll um, bring me in and, and talk about me more to others who can book me in for, for public speaking gigs or for, for classes and workshops and webinars. Or I might have lead generation goals. So it might be all about getting some generating um, new interest in your business or some PR goals. You just want to get more of yourself out there in general in more formats than just maybe your social media. So setting yourself those goals certainly is the beginning of all that. How you start a podcast though, this is where the, the, the rubber hits the road. And we've got to work out a few things, not just the technical. To be honest, the technical stuff is the easy part of it. It's the all the preparation stuff that's probably the stuff you need to think about more deeply. What you probably need to start with is choosing the type of podcast you're going to run, whether you're going to run like a, a podcast which is um, which is scripted. So if you're going to do it where it's going to be um, something which is like um, like a full, um, you know, it might have characters in it, it might have a, a storyline, something like that. There's also the monologue, which is just talking. Um, it's just you on your own talking. Discussions are where there's kind of like interviews. So we'll take a look at those. The scripted one is very suitable to those very popular true crime stories, um, the podcasts, which are like a series. They're, they're like a, a serial um, with episodes that, that form an overall uh, story arc. Um, they generally have quite high production values, strong follower loyalty. So there's a lot of people who, who can't wait till the next episode and they'll listen right, right through. It suits writers and storytellers as well. So if you're able to get um, the... Um, the, the, the idea that um, you, you are someone who loves to write and you're quite creative, this could be a really good way for you to do it. Uh, when it comes to the monologue, this is what I do. I just do a monologue. I just read it. It's very suitable for things like classes and how-tos. It's probably the easiest to make because there's no other people involved. It suits people like experts and coaches and teachers and trainers who have a lot of um, breadth and depth of, of, of knowledge in specific areas that they're going to be talking about on those podcasts. And then the discussion side is that you want some different perspectives some different voices. Um, you want to associate yourself with experts um, other than yourself. Uh, it takes a bit more organization because you have to line up those guests. And I've got some hints for that a little bit later on in this particular class to give you an idea of where you get those people from. Um, I'm approached by nearly 30 people a week who are looking to be a guest on my podcast, which is fantastic. And the problem is I don't have guests on my podcast because I don't really have the time to organize to do these recordings and all that. So I've got to pick a, I picked the, the kind of, staff me the monologue is because I was generally just short on time and that's the best thing I could do with the time I have to to work with next and to answer around a question that we just had in the chat there um the slides uh the slides won't be sent out automatically afterwards the recording of this will be though um but if you can just um uh, at the end of the uh, of this presentation, I've got my email address. Just drop your email your email to that email and I'll send them back to you. Um, and, and they're all on Canva. So I'll just send you a link to be able to see them on Canva. 
So to plan your frequency means looking at how often you're going to do an episode. So it's either daily or weekly, fortnightly, monthly. There's some pros and cons for each one. The daily, for instance, is very short and to the point. It's probably the easiest to do. Um, it's plan uh, not really easiest. It's the shortest to do, but you're doing it every day. Um, it's generally around um, that news-based stuff. So you want to do something that's um, of topical importance right now, or it may be um, something you should planned out. For instance, uh, my entire um, my entire uh, subject matter for my daily podcast next year from the 3rd of January onwards is going to be pre-planned. So I don't have to go and look, oh, what are, what are we going to talk about today? I've actually set out the entire uh, curriculum curriculum for the year is already set out on a big spreadsheet so i know where i'm going with that um it accelerates listenership i noticed that when i have run previously attempted um probably about a year and a half ago i did a month where i did 30 podcast episodes in a month and it increased the listenership really sharply very quickly um so having a lot more of them certainly does increase the listenership and increases the amount of times people do listen to you which if you're trying to monetize your podcast for other people to be able to um to sponsor that's a very good thing i'm not necessarily necessarily doing that i just like to see those numbers going up um it suits those who've got lots of info and lots of ways of presenting that info so you're not necessarily having to talk about 365 different topics you may cover two topics in you know um, 365 different ways. So just that you need to have a lot of depth and breadth of knowledge in those topics. Um, in my case, I'm doing two, three, maybe four topics over the year. Um, so I need to have a lot of information on those because I'm going to have to come up with, if I'm telling you four topics, I'm going to have to do 13 um, different, uh, to 13 versions of each topic. So that's 13 episodes on each of those four topics that gets me you know, 365 days worth of content. That's actually, no, it's not right. It gives me half a year's worth of content, but you know what I mean. The weekly one is where most podcasts are. Uh, most podcasts like to go weekly. It tends to be longer, more predictable patterns, uh, fits with listener lifestyles. It's one of those things where um, it's the most comfortable place for them to be. At the moment, my podcast is weekly because it's comfortable for me to do. I can whack it together on a Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening, and then it goes on Monday morning. Or I just do it on Monday morning and send it out, which is what I did this week. Um, it tends to be a bit longer. So they tend to be more that sort of, um, you know, oh, maybe 10 above, 10 above 10 minutes, 10 to about 30 minutes long. Um, you can predict your patterns of listenership a lot more because generally the day it goes out is the most listened to day. Um, and after that, it sort of fades off a little bit. Um, it fits with listeners' lifestyles too. They don't have the whole week to be doing that. So yeah, it's great. Um, thank you for picking up the spelling error, uh, Michelle. Um, as long as the message is getting through. Uh, monthly tends to be longer. They tend to be longer episodes, tends towards higher production uh, qualities. It's also very eagerly awaited. There's one particular podcast I listen to every month and um, it, it's really, really cool. I really love that. It's, uh, it's something which I look forward to that episode every single month. And it's a very long two hour podcast but it's one which I, I, I quite cherish listening to. It's very interesting. It's, it's a story. Um, you can risk a loss of attention though, when you're doing the monthly thing. So it's, if it's um, something where you're going, okay, I'm going to put a lot of effort into this and I'm going to only reduce, produce it every month. Then what it can do is really, um, it can, it can leave people wanting more, for too long and then they lose that attention towards you so i don't like the monthly thing as much even though i'm very very invested in this particular podcast um i don't do that with any other podcast every other one i want to hear about from weekly if i've got that rapport and relationship with people if they leave it for longer than a week um i start to forget they exist even though i've been listening to them for five six seven ten years where are you going to source your information from this is really important as well so are you going to write it yourself? Are you going to reshare information you got from other people? Or are you going to repurpose something you've already done? So if you're going to write it yourself, that's the biggest effort. That, that's where the writer's uh, block comes in, the creative block comes in. You may want to, you have to write your plan out for your episode, or you have to write a script out every time you've got an episode. It has to be something new and fresh every time. And this suits people who work in areas where there's lots of new info coming out all the time. For me in tech, there's news every week of some sort of thing going on. I could put in, I could do a tech news podcast and honestly fill 365 days a year worth of short podcast episodes. 
very good with news based stuff as well not so great when you're in a topic area where there's just you feel like there's only so many ways you can talk about the same topic over and over again um resharing is another way you can do it you can then go well i'm going to bring in some information i've read from somewhere else i'm crediting that person i've uh, i've got that information from and i'm discussing or um reacting to that information so you might be talking about um elon musk and the mess he's creating over at twitter at the moment by creating a lot of um a lot of hate speech going on there it's not a very brand safe environment to be in certainly not safe for people who um um, perhaps uh, are, are quite easily offended by things or are find they're quite sensitive to what other people say. Um, it's not safe right now. And you might want to talk about that and react about how that's going. Um, it does take a little less effort than what uh, writing every time you have to write a fresh episode, because what you can do is basically take the information, read it and quote it from someone else and then discuss it uh, with yourself and, and have an opinion. This is um, a lot of what say someone like um, Alex Jones. So if you ever come across him before, I hope you haven't but he's a very extreme libertarian right-wing nut job basically he's been sued for over a billion dollars for um causing a lot of pain to a lot of people by causing um a, a massive problem with a, a school massacre he didn't cause a school massacre but he actually started a conspiracy theory that denied that that school massacre ever happened so the victims of that have now sued him and he's um up for a billion dollars in fines so and, and compensation so it's like a massive thing there that that's the problem you can get with reacting to other people's stuff you've got to make sure those sources are correct it's a little less effort than writing everything yourself but the easiest way is repurposing for my case i repurpose a blog post i take the top and the tail and I have an intro and an outro to it and it's very defined you know it's where i take the first line and i say and i say hey this is clickstar the australian digital marketing podcast i'm don and james and then i continue it on and at the end of every episode i've got my tag which is um saying you can find out more at my website don or with one of my many courses in fact this week we passed 500 people um downloading and completing my personal branding um uh, mini course you can get it for free at dantesandjames.com and right now it's time for you to get back to work and get your business get known get found and stay known and that's how i end every episode so it has a continuity and a kind of consistency that goes through them all it can be awkward to read though because not all the time when you read write something for reading off a screen does it translate well to being read out loud so if you've got to have a particular style of writing that's very conversational and casual that can be turned into something that that's, it's, it's, it translates well to being something more than just written on a page. Then you've got to choose your length. I know there's a lot to consider here. But trust me, when you do all this stuff first, the actual technical stuff, which I'm going to spend probably the least amount of time on, is just going to make it, it's going to be so much easier. So you might choose a short, medium, or long kind of podcasts the short ones are generally under 10 minutes they're the lowest effort they suit daily and weekly podcast episodes the medium ones from that 10 to about 30 minutes long that suits people who want to do something maybe weekly or fortnightly and it's good for that sort of mid-range effort so you don't want to go too hard on it but you don't want to be too lazy with it you know i do the short ones because you know i'm just a naturally lazy guy um, the long ones are 30 plus minutes. So you're looking at, you know, longer episodes up to two hours in some cases. Um, I know there's a podcast that was happening with a, um, with a particularly nasty person that um, was being interviewed by another particularly nasty person that I listened to, which was nearly five hours long. It was such a train wreck that I couldn't stop listening to it. I'm not going to tell you who those are because I don't want you to waste your time on listening to them. They're terrible people. Um, it also suits people who want that sort of less often, so maybe fortnightly or monthly episodes, and it takes the maximum effort because obviously you've got a lot of editing that's going to happen when you've got big, long conversations or big, long discussions or reactions. So what do you do when you're recording a podcast? This is where we get to the technical angle. Recording a podcast can happen through a system called Audacity, um, which is a free download for Windows and Mac. Uh, you get it at audacityteam.org. I'm going to show you in a minute what that looks like. Um, that is one of the more popular ways to be doing it on your computer. So that's how I do it. Um, and I'm going to show you exactly how I do that in just a second so you can get an idea of how that software works. Um, another way is through Anchor, which is um, a, a Spotify tool. It's kind of like an all-in-one podcast tool. It allows you to work on your computer, on an Android phone or an Apple phone as well. Um, you just go to anchor.fm or you just go and download it from the App Store. And you can literally just record into your phone or into your computer and it will 
allow you, it's got like a really simple editor in there as well. Um, it's not particularly good for having intros and outros and all that sort of thing, but it's very good for if you just go straight in and you're talking just off the top of your head on something. It could be a really handy way for if you want to do a daily thoughts podcast where you talk about something um, every single day and you might just get out your phone and just simply talk to your phone. And the quality doesn't have to be as good, um, but if you've got like a really good microphone or headset microphone that goes into your phone or into your computer, you can get a better quality out of it as well. The good thing about Anchor though, is that it's not just a recording tool. It's also an editing tool and it's also a distribution tool. So it actually distributes your podcast to all those platforms like Spotify, you, uh, not YouTube, but Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, um, some of the other places like um, Amazon Music um, also has them. Audible is another place where podcasts go to. So what I'm going to look at is Audacity and it's going to swap my screens here and uh, bring this one up so you can see this on the screen. Um, go, it's got to bring it up on the right screen. Let me just unshare this one. This is where things get technical when you're trying to share lots of different screens and move things around a lot. Um, lucky I've got a, a spare screen with me while I'm traveling. Would you believe I actually put a whole monitor in my bag to go traveling for six weeks because I um because I needed to be able to do all these things really well. So I'm just going to share the screen again. And you'll be able to see what Audacity looks like and how it works. So Audacity is kind of like a, a timeline of sounds. So in our case, I've got this intro over here, which is the beginning of it. So I can actually move these around so they're in the better order, but that'll do for now. Um, so I've got the intro and then I've got the outro. So if I just uh, play that intro. Which isn't always what we assume it to be. So this is one of my most recent episodes I did. And the outro kind of goes. Um, now it's time for you to get back to work. Get your small business, get known, get found and stay known. So I actually went and purchased that music from a um, music licensing company. So, but you don't have to go that far. You can just end, end, grab a bit of free. Um, I know Canva's got some free music library in there. There's definitely the like, free music libraries included in lots of other places. So there's, yeah, plenty of uh, other places. Now, does Audacity automatically record two mics as different audio streams? It can do, um, but you, what you might need to do is as have like a, a some sort of splitter that allows you to have two inputs going in. Now, most computers won't have two microphone inputs. So you would have to have some kind of system that allows you to have two going in and splitting it. So that just takes usually um, like a mixing desk between them all. So it's not going to do it on its own. But thanks for that question. Really good question. Um, in this case, this one's splitting into tracks. So what I've done, I've gone and recorded this one. So I go for, uh, new and I've got it automatically. Uh, I've got to put this on the right one because it's not showing the right window. Let me stop share and share the right window. Let's just share the whole of desktop too, so you can see it all. So I can, so I've started up, I've got that old one behind me, which is the project. Now, and this one is just the individual. So I can start to record just like this and you can, oh, it doesn't want to, because it's going to play up on me today. So let's uh, just make sure it's recording in the right thing. It's um, coming in through my microphone, which is correct. So is it going to record for me? Nope. It needs me to restart everything. This is one of the problems with Audacity is that because it's um, based upon a, um, a, uh, a computer system and audio inputs. I change my audio inputs over quite a lot. So when um, it doesn't quite work is because I haven't done my audio inputs quite right. So let's try that again, but let's start to record one, two, three, four, and it sees it actually recording what I've got into Audacity. So if I look at that and I want to make any sort of edits to it, I just stop it from recording, highlight it, let's play it. Record one, two, three, four. So that's the recorded back. So what I can now do is uh, what I generally do is I have a, a, a certain lot of um, amplification I do to it to make it sound nice and even. So I'll pull effect and then I'll go down to the compressor, which then increases what we call the loudness of it. So you can see it looks a lot louder. Start record one, two, three, four. It also puts a lot of background noise in there. But what I might also do sometimes is just reduce sometimes the, the how tight, how loud it is, or I'll put a, um, uh, like a, um, a, uh, a maximum uh, head on how high it's going to go. I'm trying to find the, the word for it. What's the word for it? Um, it's it's a it's putting a, a limit to how loud it's going to go, so it can clip out a little bit. I can deamplify that a little bit. So I'm going to take that down by an extra, you know, by an extra three decibels. 
That's usually about right. And that puts it into a bit more nicer. But what the uh, compressing does is makes everything when they're loud, when it's softer, brings it up a little bit louder. So it's got that, you know, that horrible thing when you're listening in the audio levels, like in a movie, you are too loud on the, on the music, but not loud enough on the voice and that sort of thing. This is what compression does. It allows the voice to be punchy above that music so when i add in the music i don't have to then play around with sound levels so much you'll see in the um in the uh the project i just started so podcast template this one in here i've already designed my um my intro and outro to be softer at the beginning before it goes into the bit where it goes da 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 so then it will fit in with the sound i've got for my for my actual voice track so once I do all that, I've got to say, for instance, this is all of it. I've been able to um, get in my new track down the bottom here. I'll then just go uh, file, export, and export as an MP3, and it'll export everything that I've selected. Or otherwise, what I'll try to do is then go to tracks. If I really want to be fancy, I'll then um, mix and render, and then it puts it down to one track, which I can then go file, export as an MP3. And off it goes. I've got now got my file. Um, Jennifer was losing compression. I was just explaining what compression was. Sorry, you missed that. It was, it, what it does, it allows um, the softer stuff to be louder and the louder stuff to be sort of mid-range. So it sort of makes everything sound more even rather than you having that, that big rise and drop in the, the volume of things. They've used it on radio stations a lot to try and help um, when someone's like whispering in the microphone, you can still hear it loud and clear on the radio rather than it being so whispered that you can't hear it at all. So it just makes your voice nice and even and a, 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 a consistent level of loudness across, well, as, as, as loud as it possibly can. I can also go into this track, for instance, and reduce some of these things. So there's a bit too much noise in my breaths. So I want to remove my breath breaks or somehow reduce them a bit. So I can just highlight that area and then go generate silence. And that will remove it down to silence. Um, so then you don't hear my breathing in place. Or if I really want to be tight, I can just take out the breath breaks altogether just by deleting them. So that's um, a way for you to be able to uh, play around with Audacity. Now, I'm certainly not the best trainer in Audacity and I could do a whole workshop on how to use it and how to use compression, how to use sound, um, you know, uh, graphic equalizers to make everything work out, work with stereo and mono and all that sort of thing. You notice this is just in one track in mono. That's because it's just voice. You don't need to be in stereo for voice. But if you had music, you obviously want that, that dynamic of, 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 of each side of the left and right working in tandem or it may be Dolby where it may be you know five different channels or eight different channels all coming from lots of different places so um that's that's a quick look at audacity once you get that you've got your audio file once you've got your audio file that's when you're going to move on to doing something a bit more you're going to start moving on to your um your 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 distribution so the distribution then of your um through podcasting platforms. Platform, I think Podbean from memory starts free. RSS.com starts for free. But once you get to a certain amount of episodes, then you have to pay. Um, Anchor, again, starts for free, but then grows as you add more things to it. Libsyn, I think, starts for free. It's one of the biggest ones, actually, Libsyn. Um, Podbean's also very, very popular as well. Um, I use two. I use one called Audio Boom, and I've been using for practicing and trialing. I use one called podcast.co. Audio Boom is around about $10 US per month, um, and that allows me to sort of store everything in there. Now, I'm not going to go deeply into these systems because every single one of them is different in the way they handle those things. I might be able to show you podcast.co because um, that's, that's, that's a little test one I do. So if I just pop out of here, pop into podcast.co, you can sort of get an idea of how this works. So podcast.co, and you'll be able to see you know, roughly how this would work. Logging in. And look, they, they do operate largely the same way, but they all have their individual differences. So in this one, this is like my trial one. It's a small marketer podcast. If I click on that and go into the podcast, you can see, you know, some of the analytics of this one. This is not one. I, this is like a, 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 a my, my practice one. I don't actually distribute everything through this one. Um, you can see how many episodes it got, how many downloads over the month it had, um, the monthly unique downloads. You can see all the episodes I produced. So all those, which are basically the same as my main podcast. 
your analytics will show you know what the listenership has been like and how it's been going where they've been listening from where what um systems they're listening from as well so you've got a much clearer idea of where people are coming from for your podcast you put your settings so you know your basic settings that go out to um to to all the um places like apple podcasts and spotify this is the information that they end up having about your podcast the album art the name the category and then a little bit about it, like a little blurb about it. Um, and then you can share and publish. This is where, for instance, we go, there's a feed that you can then put into all those different things. So in this case, they already provide a whole lot of those. So I've gone up and um, they, they distribute through to all these. So Podchaser is already set up. Um, Pod, Google Podcasts, is, it's, it's already put it out there and it's come back and here's the feed on Google. Here's the feed on Deezer, Stitcher, Acast, Apple Podcasts has already got it. A little bit of a different setup for Apple Podcasts. You have to get a, a um, an account with Apple. It's free, um, but you have to go through a couple of steps extra to get it onto Apple. Um, so I did that quite a long time ago, but um, if there's um, you know, that specific stuff, there's lots of instructions online that'll help you on how to do that. Um, Spotify as well is automatically posted too. And here's where you'll find it on Spotify. Spotify and tune in pocket casts Amazon music are all in there so they, the podcast.co is actually automatically sent all those out except for Apple Apple I have to go and put some of that in myself um now this pot great question for Rowena um does my podcast get streamed internationally or just within Australia once it's out there it goes international they're all international now my listenership for my podcast is majority Australian because it's pitched as an Australian digital marketing podcast for you though that will go everywhere you want it to go. What it will tend to favor though, is when you mention a specific country in there and you say it's coming from that country, it will favor that country when it comes to distribution. So when people are suggested new podcasts to listen to, then those new podcasts will then tend to be um, more around uh, the country of origin of that podcast. So you gotta be careful when you set up on what your countries are and what you're mentioning with the countries, just to make sure that you're going to the right places. So for instance, if you wanted to focus on Thailand, for instance, uh, you might want to say that this is a Thai um, language podcast. Um, if it's a Thai language podcast, it's much more likely to be picked up for suggestions in the podcast platforms uh, in Thailand, for instance, rather than in Australia, where predominantly the language is English. So yeah, just, um, just, just make it very clear in your podcast name and description who it's for. And that tends to be who it's going to be suggested to when it comes around to getting your podcast out beyond just yourself and out to the rest of the world. So those different um, podcast um, platforms I was talking about, I've used a few of them. probably say that um audio boot for me has been i've got a friend who uses that for her and she's got a very successful podcast um that does very well in there as well um but the anchor is probably the easiest one of all because it's so simple you can do it on a mobile phone then it's probably the one that's going to be the easiest to use so it's a very good beginner's one you can you can start with anchor and then move off to somewhere else you don't have to stick with one all the time um but it might be a good place to start if you're just going to experiment a little and you just want to get those first few episodes out without spending too much money because um yeah putting a, a headphone um, and, and a microphone into your into your um, into your mobile phone is probably a little bit easier than setting it up with a computer and having to get expensive microphones. Audio Boom is the one I've chosen to do. Um, that's where all 222 of my episodes are, where all my analytics are. Um, but if you're looking for guests, and this is going to come up if you want to do an interview style podcast, and this seems to be a podcast format that lots of people are really comfortable with. And when I come to think about it, this is what I listen to most. Most of the podcasts I listen to usually have guest presenters on them. And they're very interesting that because there's always something new, someone in there. And if you want to look for guests, there's systems that you can be part of and look on that you can put out yourself out there to be a guest on podcasts, or you can say that you have a podcast that's looking for guests. So Matchmaker FM, podcastguest.com, Podmatch, um, Perfect Podcast Guest. They're all just as good as each other. They've all got lots and lots of people. Matchmaker's got about 50,000 guests registered. So if you need guests who are, you know, people who are experts in what it is you do and you want to invite them on to have a chat with them, that's where you go. One of these sort of places. Um, there are a few things you need to check off. First of all, like when you want to get a guest on there, you've really got to have an understanding of what it is that they bring to your audience. 
um, and understand what they're trying to sell. Most of the time, these people are trying to get on your podcast because they're trying to get a bigger audience to sell what they're trying to sell. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing. It just depends on what they're wanting to sell. So you may want to ask them up front saying, what is the, 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 the thing that you want to get out of this? What's in it for them? So in terms of, um, are they going, trying to get traffic to their website for people to do their course? Are they trying to get traffic to their e-commerce site in order for people to buy from them? Um, and then what's in it for you? So for them, it might be um, they, they get a link back to their website from your podcast. So you, here's a link to their website. They get to advertise their website. It's good for their SEO. A lot of people do it because it's great to have a variety of people coming from SEO wise. Um, I'm going to be doing some guesting on podcasts next year. I've did about five of them this year. I'm probably looking to get that up to more like about 30 next year. So, um, hey, if you know a podcast that could use my expertise, I'd love to talk on it. Maybe you've got one. Um, and then there's what's in it for you. As the host of the podcast, what's in it for you to have someone else in there? Does it add more expertise for you? That's great. That's a really good reason. Um, does it add extra voices and extra perspectives for your listeners? That could be a good thing as well. But just remember, if that person comes in, they've got a completely different way of thinking than what you do. And they actually kind of tear down what it is you've got. You've got ultimate control to not put that podcast out. But it's going to be a whole lot of effort put in for a podcast you can't use because you didn't do enough research into that person to begin with. Don't just read the PR letters that come in your email saying, hey, here's a person who wants to be a, a guest on your, your podcast. Perhaps look at it a bit more like um, what's in it for them? What are they getting out of this? And what's in it for me and my audience? And do just a little bit of background checking on there because you may find this person has um, had a really bad run with other people on podcasts or you may find they're completely fine and they completely com complement what it is you're doing as well. So that's pretty much about it. We don't really need to go into much more detail. The systems themselves are easier than the planning process. So the takeaways I'd like to give you are so much more around making sure you have an idea of why you're wanting to do this podcast. Why are you wanting to um, do it in the first place? Are you just trying to get ahead of a trend? Are you trying to um, you know, meet some really good goals that you're trying to set yourself? Are you perhaps looking to, um, you know, you've seen an opportunity that no one else really is talking about what you talk about um, on podcasts and you think there might be a good opportunity for you there. They're all very valid reasons to do it. Just remember though, that most podcasts never get past episode three because people will give a lot of different stuff. Um, Karen's asking a really good question, which is um, what kind of setup in types of apps and mic, et cetera, is best for interview style podcasts. So what you find for interviews, um, generally most of them are done remotely through something like Zoom. So you recorded on zoom uh, you take the audio file so when you record something on zoom it produces both a video file with a video and audio and a separate audio file so you can take that audio file and just put it into audacity edit it down um, and then and then bring it up like that microphones wise you can get really good microphones from anywhere from about $50 up, particularly good microphones are around about the $150 level. So we start getting like the, the, the Blue Yeti, the brand's called Blue, it's called a Yeti. It looks like a little can um, with a dome on it. It's a really chunky one. Um, it's really good and omnidirectional. So you can sort of put it between two people who are sitting closely and it'll pick them up quite evenly. Um, there's things like the Roadcaster and the Maunocaster. So the Maunocaster is M-A-O-N-O-C-A-S-T-E-R. Maunocaster is like a, it's a mixing desk. Um, then it's got microphone inputs, so you can sit at a table. It's also got buttons where you can enter things like, you know, um, pre-recorded audio that can go in there. And you can increase and decrease the levels. And then one input goes into the computer and records it that way. Um, that's that's one of those things. The Rodecaster, R-O-D-E caster, um, is an Australian brand. And that's, a, that's another way you can get those sort of that sort of extra quality in but honestly most of the ones you're going to do are not going to be with people in person they're probably going to be online so what you want to do is make sure they've got a damn good internet connection to get that through on a zoom call um, there's other systems uh, there's one called riverside.fm riverside.fm is a really good um, very high quality audio recording system that will allow you to be able to um, uh, to get multiple inputs from those places and then edit them later on download them separately download them together um, and it also does does it in a format that's um, very high paced, but you also need to be careful with your internet connection. If you've got a really bad internet connection, get to somewhere where you've got a good one. A friend of mine who has a very good podcast kind of got caught with that. She's got a terrible internet connection at home, came to my office to be able to use it there and it was much better quality and she was able to run it really flawlessly on a really good internet connection. So that internet connection with a lot of these really, really matters. 
So if you want to learn more about podcasting or get some one-to-one help with it, that's where you can get on with the Digital Solutions Program. Three hours of one-to-one coaching with people like me. And we've got a couple of podcasters in the crew. So you can sort of look around at who specializes in podcasts specifically at the following um, address, digitalsolutions.businessstation.com dot com dot au that's a long address isn't it just remember it's the name of the program then the provider then the dot com dot au just take a screenshot or a photo of that just so you know where to go or just search business station on on google you'll find it and you'll be able to register for that 44 bucks three hours of one-to-one and then there's many websites and workshops and webinars that you want to do we also have live workshops at various places around australia mostly in uh brisbane uh gold coast perth and Darwin. So if you're in one of those places, look out for some free workshops coming up as well. Um, Need any questions answered, please. That email address on the screen is where you're probably going to get me the easiest or on LinkedIn, where I am very, very active as well. Far more than Facebook and Twitter um, or or Instagram, really LinkedIn's where I'm really at the most. So please do send me a message. um, If you want to thank me for something or you want to just, uh, hey, you want to buy me a coffee, if you want to have a chat, um, I give everyone a 15 minute free chat to sort of help them out if they want to. You can get all that at my um at my website, DanteStJames.com. DanteStJames.com. Wow, that was a lot. Thank you so much for joining. I really hope you got something out of that. And I hope more than anything, it's inspired you to go out and do the podcast thing. It's so much opportunity there because there's so few people are doing it in comparison to the people who are listening to them. So please give it a go. Try one of those tools. Start off with Anchor if you want to really start the most simple way of doing it. Um, if you want to get into a bit more techie, use Audacity and, and one of those things like Audio Boom, like I do. And if you get stuck with anything, drop me a line. And I'll be glad to send you in sort of right directions. I'll at least give you some pointers to where to go. Thank you so much. Have a fantastic week. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year if you're um, live on here. And if you're watching on YouTube, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. We really do value you being able to tell us how we're going with these presentations. Have a great week and I'll see you soon.